Kia ora. Hello and welcome to Kotahi, New Zealand. Here, 500,000 citizens enjoy beautiful, natural landscapes and mountain views. 100 years ago, the Founding Fathers turned to the language of the Maori, the indigenous people, and chose Kotahi, meaning one together. In 2117, this unique culture still influences citizens' day-to-day -day lives. I am Bailey, granddaughter of Okomatua, respected elder. Using a traditional Maori greeting, I would like to introduce you to Isaiah, an architectural engineer, and Jake, a biomedical engineer. Both were involved in innovative projects for this age-friendly city. Centrally located on North Island, we enjoy a temperate climate with over 200 days of sunshine. The dormant supervolcano, whose crater forms like Topo, provides outdoor adventures and acts as an integral component of the city's energy supply. Electrical, mechanical, and chemical engineers designed the T5 electrical energy production system. In a closed loop of titanium tubes, a saltwater solution is heated by natural geothermal energy. The solution passes through silicon nanowire generators that transform heat into electrical power. It requires little maintenance, functions 24 hours a day, and helps us maintain our flourishing economy. Chemical and mechanical engineers also designed an eco-friendly desalinization system. Salt water piped in from the Tasman Sea is filtered to remove suspended solids. It then flows through a high-tech graphene sieve membrane comprised of a single layer of carbon atoms arranged in a hexagonal lattice. The water molecules pass through sub-nanometer holes capturing the salt. The water flows into the city's pipe system and the salt is transported to a processing facility where it is sold commercially. People and goods are transported by two easy access, age-friendly transportation systems. The first, the GMS, gyroscopic monorail system, operates elliptical vehicles equipped with powerful gyroscopes that maintain each one's stability. Supported by high adjustable stilts, the cars maneuver over and under obstacles. Solid state batteries power the drive motors and redundant gyroscopes with backup batteries ensure they remain operational. Gyro buses run predetermined routes through the commercial, residential, and industrial zones. Public or personal point-to-point -point gyro cars are available. All are piloted by an automated guidance system run through our communications tower. My grandmother often rode the gyro bus to the Papori Pakapu, where she participates in recreational and civic events that keep her socially active. The GMS also optimizes public services. In an emergency, a responder selects a destination, and the GMS computer system automatically maneuvers other vehicles out of the way. To reach upper floors, a propeller-powered drone is deployed from the roof of the emergency vehicle. Upon reaching the appropriate level, it latches onto a building structure, allowing first responders to provide assistance. The maglev, magnetically levitating elevators that travel both horizontally and vertically within buildings, minimizing wait times throughout our city. Inspired by the Maori tradition of Fanau, the family and extended family, I first interviewed city elders and professionals about seniors' needs. Statistics show an increased risk of mortality, declining cognitive abilities, and many mental and physical health issues caused by social isolation. One study found that 30% of people suffering from social isolation would die in the next seven years, a comparable risk factor for early death as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Multiple generations of my finale live together. Requirements for our smart homes were movable, color-changing walls, energy-capturing floors, and an open concept floor plan. Holographic game tables encourage social interaction between online participants. Hallways lead to individual bedrooms and bathrooms. Using automated, movable walls, we can reconfigure unoccupied areas, adding space to rooms. After researching photobiology studies about color, color's effect on one state of mind, my firm's chemical and computer engineers design walls embedded with magnetochromatic fibers. Microscopic polymer microspheres interact with wireless sensors that read people's emotions by measuring breathing and heart rate. The sensors message the microspheres and the wall's color changes to a calming or stimulating hue. Community rooms operate on a program default setting, but personal preferences can be applied. Synthetic floor tiles containing nano piezoelectric generators convert kinetic energy generated by footsteps into electric energy. Shock absorbent tiles minimize joint pain and deterioration. They also absorb noise, useful in a large household. With so many sensors monitoring brain waves, emotions, and personal medical data, my family felt the risk of being unnecessarily watched. We were assured that data is secure through strong encryption. Medical monitoring is by choice, 
and data is not shared with other entities. As a member of the medical team, consisting of biomedical, computer, electrical and mechanical engineers, our goal was keeping Kotahi citizens healthy and active. Patients with major injuries received bioprinted transplants utilizing immunoprivileged mesenchymal chemo stem cells derived from bone marrow that can be changed into specialized cell tissue. First, the cells are loaded into high-tech 25 millimeter cube cell selectors, machines designed to manipulate the organelles of the stem cell and transform it into specialized tissue. The cells then receive a glucose treatment accelerating the cell growth cycle. From there, they are loaded into bioprinters. They can print bone, cartilage, and neurotissue, utilizing stem cells and biodegradable polymers. The polymers provide a support structure for new cells to grow on. The cells are printed layer by layer. Doctors in the medical building then transplant the biostructure into the patient. This technology has helped my grandmother remain healthy, active, and able to continue working, participating in community activities, and interacting with others at social events. We had concerns that the ability to repair tissues and organs could lead to the manipulation of the genetic codes, thus creating superhumans. The medical team assured us that the solution would increase quality of life, but not change genetic makeup. The human body and its organs will eventually wear out through natural aging. With the elimination of social isolation, a major underlying cause of many mental and physical health issues, Kotahi has become a model city for all to replicate. Kotahi's innovative engineers have built an age-friendly city that provides opportunities for all of its citizens, young and old, to be as self-sufficient and community-oriented as desired. And, and no ra. Ra. Goodbye, goodbye from, from New Zealand. Zealand. What trade-offs and or compromises did you make when designing your age-friendly city? Well, our first compromise was our location of our city. We wanted to find a city, a location that was sparsely populated, but had a cultural tie that respected elders. So we turned to the Maori. They even have a word for respected elder, which is komuta. What is the most innovative aspect of your team's age-friendly design? One of the most innovative things is our maglev, because they allow standard elevators to take up less room and allow the integration of a subway system that can be used into an elevator. Another innovative thing is our GMS, because it is adaptable to current technology and can be implemented into a city that still uses cars. How is your city designed to encourage intergenerational activity, that the generations interact with each other? So one of the main things that we have that encourages multiple generations to interact with each other is our multi-generational smart homes. In our multi-generational smart homes, we have um, FNAL, which is multiple generations of the family. So we'll have grandparents and their children and then their grandchildren living together, as well as aunts and uncles. So that way you have a more community feel in your home. Another way is our Papori Pakapu, our community center. And it is not separated out just for seniors or younger people, but it is made to be fully integratable for every age. Where does your food supply come from? Our citizens like to stick to the Tasman diet. The Tasman diet is a bunch of locally grown foods that are grown near our city because of the low population and our volcanic soil. Since we have nutrient rich soil, it is easy for us to be able to grow many crops on, in our land. And we have a lot of farmland around our city as well. So that's where we get most of our fruits and vegetables from. Now, since we are an island and we're surrounded by bodies of water, that means that we have the ability to fish, though we have ethical fish practices, so we do not overfish. What is the primary means of employment? We have lots of engineering and designing jobs in our industrial area where we produce our maglifts and our GMS manufacturers. However, lots of jobs are filled in customer care because we found that even though we had robotics and AI that could cover customer service, 
people enjoyed a more human feel. What was the most difficult innovation to implement into your city? One of the most difficult innovations for our city was being able to integrate young and old. Just because now, in 2017, we have issues with people living alone or people feeling like they're alone. So a lot of people felt like they were losing their independence when we wanted them to live together. So we had to find a way to help them know that they had their independence, but also be in a community because that is better for the well-being of all people. Now, we did this through picking our location. Since a sixth of New Zealand's population is more than 50% Maori, we decided to put our city there because they also have a word for the extended family, for now, and they have traditionally lived multiple generations for thousands of years. How does your city prevent pollution? Well, since both of our transportation options are completely emission free, we do not have to worry about emissions from roads. Oh, we support people buying recycled materials with their packaging, and anything that can be recycled is. However, for the things that cannot be recycled, they are sent to our incinerator building where they are compacted and burned with scrubbers in place. Now, our energy production system is clean energy, the T5, the tote tote, and it, it it's, doesn't emit any pollution since it produces electrical power, and this runs most, actually, everything in our city. And the advantage of the T5 is, in case of a leak, there is no environmental impact because it is just salt and water.